You ain't never seen a man turn leg go with his hands. You ain't never seen a man get a queen wet with a glance. What a turn, why whole wide world, mind in my mind. In and out of time, my light shine bright for the blind. Some by the way I do it. 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 Said I'm gonna be a millionaire soon, but I already knew it. I'ma die the bullets fluid. All this winning therapeutic. Some by the way I do it. Some by the way I do it. They be trying to drain my energy up with the battery is not included. Women trying to be recruited. Let them do the then I bought it. What is cute that she falling? Some by the way I do it. I remember playing ring around the rosy now. I got a pocket full of OZs, water dollars, wallet full of old cheese. Got a Glock, a cock and pop a police. Block a block a block a boom, shock a lock a bottle, shot him while he rock a rosary. Got your mama watching out the nose, please. Sloppy toppy while I'm trying to go sleep. Some but the way I do it, I ball out like a nude is hooping. Or a who's your student? Got the problem, I'm a room is cubic. I'm a superhuman, you a decorate. Peace, family. Welcome to another episode of Underground World Road Productions. This your host, Brother Rich, reporting live from NYC, where it is now five degrees outside. It's freezing out here, but we're going to keep it going. Uh, we starting the year off right. We started it out with health. Today, I got our community's Cosmos position. Brother Ra, uh, cool, man. Welcome back to the show, brother. Peace, bro. Good to be here. Yeah, man, good to have you back, man. Last time you was on the show, you was accurate as always, man. You've been dropping gems and jewels for the family. I know they was hollering at you, but we are here today to see what's going on. It's, just, it's what we call a new year. Some people say the new year starts in March. But I want to know what's going on for 2018. You know, all these rich people, they got their astrologists, the politicians, the presidents. They got people that they travel with. And they let them know what's going on celestially, you know, what's going on in Cosmos so they can know what's going on. Then they'll know what's going on down here. We got to report to brothers like you, my brother. So that's why you're here. You got uh, hundreds of thousands of people listening to you, brother. Let's talk about 2018. What's going on in 2018, my brother, cosmically? Um, there's a lot going on with the, with the motion of the planet, as always, man. But... um. It's what comes to the fore that the stars, you know, integrate um, and that they impart to us and um, that they convey to us. And I was looking at, you know, I do eclipses, man. You know, that's my thing because the eclipses are significant motions that only occur periodically. They're not every week, every month occurrence. So they do happen four to five times a year. They got a new eclipse coming up. It's a it's a blue moon eclipse, so it's rare, you know. Um, when, when is that? When is that coming? January the thirty first. Okay. This year, you know. So it's okay. like uh, what's today's date? The uh, the sixth. Yeah. Three and a half weeks away, you know. And eclipses deal with the signs that they're occurring and the secondarily the, the planets that compose the actual chart, give indications of what's going on. And this eclipse is occurring, um, it's the first one of the year. It's a full lunar eclipse, and it occurs in the signs of Leo and Aquarius, the sun being in Aquarius and the um, moon being in Leo. And, and the moon itself, it, you know, it's a full moon eclipse. It, it primarily deals with women and the feminine nature and the domestic situation. So for this country, you know, we're going to see the trends of um, the super moms, you know, the uh, the single mothers who are independent because Aquarius deals with independence. So there's going to be a lot of noise being made about women in the professional and political arena, you know, having to do with their rights their human rights and their rights as women to you know to participate in the in the field in the realm of men, so to speak, and we're going to hear some of that at the same time. This uh, eclipse is a continuance of that Leo eclipse we had last summer, and you know Leo deals with children, so this pedophilia came to the fore in the media 
you know, mm-hmm. as a result right. of that Leo eclipse. Yeah. <clears throat> but because this new moon is going on in Leo, then you're going to get a rehashing or a, um, a furtherance of that cycle having to do with children. And we're going to hear a whole lot more about that, especially because it's just, what, a few months ago, they, 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 um, had a referendum or a vote or something to discuss the the validity of, of pedophilia, man. Like you know what I'm saying. And it, even though this is like outrageous, you know, it, it, they would even come to the to question the motion of the planets and our solar system gave indication to it. So the fact that it's going on in Leo again at the beginning of this year, we can before the spring end. You know, before some of in the next six months, we can look to see it remain as a topic to be uh, paid attention to, man. You know, and we as a people have to really take into consideration the the consequences of such action being taken by the law, because it's not their children that's going to be negatively affected by this tomorrow. It's our kids, man. You know, they're not talking about their kids. You're talking about hours, you know? It's like whenever when the draft was in effect for Vietnam, no congressmen, no people in positions of prominence were worried about their children being drafted. It was our children. So it, it's the same way, man. And um, they legalized pedophilia. You know, it's already rampant. So if it gets to a point where it's permissible on any level, then it's going to get way more rampant. And, you know, uh, American people altogether, regardless of ethnicity, man, have a tendency to be complacent. And they let these people put rules into effect that, you know, we rebel against later. And to rebel or revolt or stand up against later, to take a stand against later, is what the Aquarius indication is given here, and uh, the ruler of Aquarius is an Aries, a sign of war, violence, and hostility. So if it gets to the point where they actually allow this pedophilia thing to go on, we can see the same action being taken against pedophiles that was, in, you know, vigilant, vigilante being taken when it comes to uh, all like those, like those clinics that they were, when they, when they, when they had an issue with abortion. Abortion, too will become an issue because Aquarius is the sign of abortion, you know, being that it diametrically opposes Leo. So these things are what the, the, the first part and the middle of the year are going to entail. We're going to see a lot of that, you know. Um, in terms of uh, other events, you know, on a mundane level, we're looking at the, the naked solar system without any... Um, input from other charts and, you know, normally for people, people that are listening to this broadcast and they are, you know, eager to know how it's going to affect them. We can only generally poke at your birth chart because we need to see your actual birth chart in comparison with these transits. But these transits for the mundane effect, you know, how they affect humanity as a whole, without giving examination to individual charts, you know, I put a lot of emphasis on the retrogrades, you know, because they are significant motions. And I don't put as much negative connotation on it as the mainstream astrologers do because, number one, you know, they take the meanings of retrogrades from ancient astrologers who for the most part were religious and looked at the motions of the heavens for impending doom only or, or mostly. And they, they followed Claudius Ptolemy from the, uh, from the El Majest, this, this astrology, but one of the first astrology books ever written, you know. And, you know, he had a lot of negative connotation to be given. And the reason for that was that um, it was mostly for political purposes that, astrology was used and it was mostly to avert negative um, occurrences and processes that they were even looking at. So this is what came to the fore in terms of what they meant. So, but, you know, this science has evolved, has gone through an evolutionary process being um, hidden away, being 
demonized by the church and also coming out from being applied strictly to mundane and political affairs to being applied to the personal. And personally, retrogrades aren't that bad. They occur for the outer planets when the sun is, for the most part, when the sun is in trying aspect to them. So that trying aspect, astrologically, universally, in Vedic astrology as well as Western astrology, in Eastern and Western, they look at trines as favorable aspects. And since most of the time, you know, with the exception of Mars and, and, and a few other planets, uh, uh, retrogrades occur when they're trying to the sun, then on an individual basis they tend to be good. So that's what I want to focus on with regard to this discussion so that people can have some idea as to what to look for, you know. And I'm going to try to apply it to individual signs. And for those listening, they need to be mindful that this pertains to the sun sign that I'm speaking on when I mention it. And it pertains to the ascendant of the same sign, the rising sign of the same sign. And, you know, my experience as an astrologer, you know, I understand how it is not very popularly known that the rising sign really is who you are. So a lot of you people are going to hear this and then say, well, I'm a Leo, and that, that didn't happen to me. Well, you better check your rising sign. Check the rising sign that I mentioned because what I do mention pertaining to the sign also applies to the rising sign for the most part. And that's really where I'm speaking to. So um, hopefully what? I give you all some inspiration to for your knowledge in the, in the subject. Before you draw any strong conclusions to with it, right? Now, um, the first retrograde that we're going to have is with the planet Jupiter. And that occurs on March the 9th, all right? And it's going to stay retrograde until July 9th. Jupiter is the planet of broadcasting. You know, in its most general, most worldly application, it deals with expansion. So, but to, as far as the human consciousness is concerned, it deals with bearing witness to things that are blown out of proportion or things that are widely distributed, okay, uh, things that are dispersed, made popular, all right? And for the, for the most part, it represents favorable situations. So, uh, but, it, but it squares um, the eclipse place in Leo. So, you know, it's going to have its positives and negatives. And Scorpio, you know, it has a stereotype for sex, you know. And being that it squares that eclipse in Leo, you know, and the nature of the abuse that is going on with these children is sexual, okay, then we're going to see a lot of that broadcast and made and a lot of attention from the media um, brought to it, but on a, on a positive note, Scorpio represents shared resources. It represents reproduction of every conceivable sort. So not just reproduction of the sexual nature, but reproduction like mass production to, to be able to produce something over and over again, to replicate something. So we're going to see uh, um, a lot of what is available to the public being pushed, broadcasted, and what deals with shared resources in that manner. So um, we look to currencies. We look to real estate. We look to things that you absolutely need other people's participation to engage in. Well, Venus is in Aquarius. So, you know, that, that's going to bring opportunity for those who like to engage in cryptocurrencies, for those who have investments online, those who do business through websites, opportunity to flourish and to uh, multiply profits and, and, and profit margin and to grow using that means is going to be made available. Now, you know, a lot of people look at uh, this net neutrality thing as a negative and they didn't really do their research. You know, the media put negative, put a negative spin on it because a lot of people in government were upset about it. You know, we, we have to keep in mind that net neutrality 
was not in effect in 2015. I mean, it wasn't put in effect until 2015. Before then, it was private shit, right? And they left it, they gave it to the government to regulate like they regulate energy, gas, and electric, right? Which gave the government the rights to monitor a lot which was going on. So they didn't need search warrants now to... To, 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 to go into people's accounts or to go into certain networks and to to investigate what's going on. So, but now they do. Now that net neutrality has been rescinded from them, they no longer regulate, they no longer have the right to or, or the power to just dip into those situations like they want. This is what got government officials pissed off. The government also doesn't get to hit you with a universal tax because of it. Now, Venus and Aquarius has a lot to do with that indication. And because it squares Leo, I mean, it opposes Leo, the, the uh, central government of central control, and Venus is in Aquarius, it puts the, the, uh, the benefit in the hands of the people. Aquarius represents people, and Venus represents the benefit. You see what I'm saying? Then we now have the individual power to grasp our own. Certainly, the nature of the economy, when we're dealing with Venus, you got to think about the economy. The nature of the economy is going to make it so that it becomes competitive and that independent uh, organizations and agencies are going to do what they want with it. But people have to keep in mind that this is what was going on before 2015. If you look at what was going on with the Internet from 2015 to 2017, this is where a lot of people got... Uh, uh, upset with the way they were doing things on Facebook, with the, with the way that they're doing things on the internet altogether. And why? Because they had government regulation, man. And anybody that has any good sense knows that the government, when it regulates something, creates undue restrictions. So while a lot of people are complaining about that, the, the indications of, of, of our solar system, as far as celestial science is concerned, it shows opportunities for people who would use it to gain profit, you know, and that goes beyond just websites and, and, and doing business online. It goes to cryptocurrency, you know. Oranos is getting ready to move into Taurus, okay, not this year, but, you know, it's getting ready to move into Taurus, and that is going to open up brand new currencies and, and the super highway for cryptocurrency is going to take off. So, you know, it's also going, it points in a negative to, to our artificial foods, you know, GMO modified foods. And if the people are really paying attention, uh, Bill Gates and a few other individuals just recently put a big investment into that GMO thing. So it's getting ready to take off, you know. And for those people that are willing to put their money in it, they're going to benefit. Those people that need to be aware of this, of the, the growing nature of it so that they can avert it, so they can avoid it, then they better stay up on it, man. And we're going to see indications of that given this year by virtue of the fact that the echo of that motion is happening right now. We, we, you know, I mean, it's, it's happening when Venus enters Aquarius. So that's going to be um, something that, like, you know, right this second, pardon me, let me clarify that, right this second Venus is in Capricorn, but by next month, it's going to be in Aquarius. So when that occurs, you know, opportunities for cryptocurrencies should be taken advantage of then, so that by the time Oranos moves into Taurus to amplify what goes on next month with Venus, then people can benefit ahead of time. You know, like, these are the things that I look at when I'm sitting, you know, in my house and I'm going through charts reading to myself, like, what's this year going to be like, you know? And you made mention of the year not starting until spring. This is true, you know? And I, I thought about that when you first called me and was like, yo, I want you to go in on what this year is going to be like. And I was like, well, you know, I said, I don't know if you both realize that the year is going to start. We're really at the end of last year, really, right? But I put it in a, a, a year cycle context in January. January, because it doesn't matter whether we call March the beginning of the uh, year or January, I started the analysis from this month 
until next January, regardless. So, but it is true. The year starts in spring. In winter, is the death of things. And every culture that I have knowledge of, from time immemorial, look at birth as the beginning of a cycle and death as the end of that cycle. Well, winter is definitely not the beginning of the cycle. I, I can't cycle. hear you that good. Could you, I can't hear you that good no more, brother. Okay, okay. I don't know what's up with this. Um, oh, you sound better now. You sound better. Cell phone. You can hear me now? Yeah, yeah, better, much better. Go ahead. Okay. What I was saying was, as far as I understand, every culture from time immemorial has looked at birth and the blossoming of a thing at the beginning of the cycle and death or the degeneration of a thing or the, the dormancy of a thing as is death. So, and it's end, consequently, right? So, uh, in all actuality, uh, spring is the beginning of the year in terms of life and nature, all right? But this calendar that we're using is the Gregorian calendar is a copy of the Egyptian calendar, and they're looking at the cycle of the, uh, the dark star Sirius and its alignment with the earth and the sun, okay? Just a few hundred years ago, when they, well, 2,000 years ago, when they formulated and instituted this calendar, January the 1st concurred with the pinnacle of, of the dog star Sirius and its cycle. It, it was at the mid-heaven. In other words, it would be due south at midnight on January 1st. And the sun would be exactly on the other opposite side of the planet Earth. You know, therefore, the sun, the Earth, and Sirius would be in alignment, and that's what they based this Gregorian calendar on. The fact that 2,000 years has passed has removed that, uh, that. So now when you go out there, it's about 9 degrees off. When you go out there, uh, uh, Sirius is not perfectly conjunct in Midheaven. It's about 9 degrees west of due east. I mean, uh, west of due south, you see? So, and in July the 4th, it, it is opposite. You know, the uh, the sun conjuncts Sirius, and the sun is between Sirius and the earth, as opposed to the earth between the sun and Sirius at the beginning of the year. So this is the discrepancy with, with, with regard to what when the year begins and when the year ends. It all depends on what point of reference you're using as the beginning. Okay? Um, in April... Saturn goes retrograde in Capricorn. See, now what's deep about Saturn and Capricorn is that it's called home. It's at home. It's in the it's in the zone that it has free reign over when it enters Capricorn, which is two hundred and seventy degrees from where the sun is on the first day of spring. <laughs> okay. And what's deep about that is like it was fairly warm down here in Atlanta where I'm at, you know, until Saturn entered Capricorn and it suddenly got cold, you know, and that di directed my attention to the nature of Saturn and the nature of Capricorn because Capricorn is the winter month in the Northern Hemisphere, all right? And Saturn itself represents coldness, the temperature, you know, the feeling of being cold. And Oh, you got meteorological astrologers who made forecasts with that regard, saying it was going to be a harsh winter because of Saturn's ingress into Capricorn while the sun was ingressing. So the sun was conjunct Saturn, giving it extra strength and power while it was moving into Capricorn. And lo and behold, all kind of announcements came forth. I know everybody's heard of it, but I'm going to draw attention to it the blizzard that they got happening in Miami. You see what I'm saying? That is a Saturn in Capricorn thing. So we can look to this winter to be a little harsher and a little colder than the last winter, so like the last 10 to 12, maybe even 15 years. All right? And indication of that is given by Saturn's motion in the Capricorn. It is not the cause of it. It is indications, you know, about more has to do with the temperature here, the fact that the poles are drifting, the fact that um, 
the sunspot cycles, is, you know, all of that has been seven years. All of that has has input as well. You know, it's a, a gigantic machine. This solar system we live in, man, and it's like a, a calibrated Swiss watch, man, uh, with, with with hundreds of parts, really, right? So, uh, from April eighth until September fifth, Saturn will be retrograde, and what needs to be paid attention to here is, you know, the sun is in Aries when it goes retrograde. So the self being the sun, you know, wherever Aries falls on a person's chart, and for people who are Aries, sun or rising sign, right? Or people who have uh, an accumulation of planets in the, in the space that we call Aries, in the sign of Aries, in their birth chart, then we're going to see a lot of self-industry that needs, self-discipline, that needs to be applied. A lot of what you are comfortable with is going to be uncomfortable for you in the beginning of that retrograde cycle. And the purpose of that is to draw attention to those things that need maintenance, that need to be rebuilt, that need a disciplinary hand applied to it, that need the focus and attention of steadfastness, the perspective of maturity and responsibility applied to it. And wherever Capricorn falls in your birth chart, that if you're an Aries or Aries rising, then it's there with career so and lifestyle and your public facade. So for entertainers or book writers or people who are dealing with the public on, on, on a very um, regular basis and they have a strong dependency with the public, then that whole dynamic is going to need to be reworked. And that is if you have an Aries rising or and, and every son, right? If you were born in the month of Aries, or you were born in the time at the time of day that put Aries in the eastern horizon, right? Which actually happens every day for about two hours. So you're gonna need to get a breath a little bit more on the science to understand how it applies to you personally, right? Then um, just uh, 15 days later, Pluto in Capricorn is going retrograde on April the 23rd, and it's going to stay like that until October this year. Now, Pluto deals with personal power, okay, when we're talking about the individual, all right? And for for Aries, that that uh, uh, personal power and self-discipline, being though that Saturn and Pluto are in Capricorn, these things are going to need to be reworked. These things are going to have to be focused upon. And... So the way a person applies themselves to their career and the way they interact with the public is the main thing, right? I'm going to try to speak this up because I want to hit all 12 signs, right? Hopefully I'll have enough time to hit all 12 signs. For the people who are Tauruses or Taurus risers or have uh, a stellium or a multiple planetary alignment in the sign of Taurus or for wherever Taurus falls in your birth chart, wherever you are, then Taurus is the sign of economy. And this uh, motion of Saturn and Pluto going retrograde is occurring in the ninth place of stars. It has to do with education. It has to do with spiritual-based activity, especially with regards to the disciplines of spiritual-based you know, based activity. You know, I'm not talking about religion. I'm referencing, but it's also included. I'm referencing those things that need to be done to refine one's character, you know, and the need to transform your thinking and to open your mind up to a brand new paradigms are going to become eminent, especially for those people who are Taurus or Taurus rising. Moving on to Gemini, this occurs in their eighth place. This occurs in a place of shared resources for Gemini. So it has to do with being able to depend on your partner or the other involved party. See, because it's not strictly a romantic situation when we talk about partnership here. You know, you got people who own businesses mutually with other people, and they depend on their partner. Like, you know, we own this barbershop slash salon, and I go out and get the customers, and you manage the stylists. And that's what we do. This is how we keep this business running. Well, that person is your partner. <laughs> so I'm not just talking about your wife your girlfriend, your husband, or your boyfriend. I'm talking about the person whom you place a serious degree of dependency on for your well-being, be that economically or emotionally. Now, there's, there's going to be some 
transformations occurring with that regard. You know, maybe there need be a shift in responsibility for those people who have Gemini rising and or Gemini sun. And that's going to work itself out. Now, this has already been showing itself for these people anyway, by virtue of the fact that Saturn was moving through Sagittarius and their partnership house in their place of mutual interaction and mutual gain, negotiation, contracts, promises, things of that nature. And uh, uh, with that regard, that points more to the romantic aspect of relationships in seventh place. So they've already gone through a dynamic with regards to uh, how they're relating and interrelating in their, in their personal relationships. You know, that motion in Capricorn puts a little bit more emphasis. It brings it more out from beneath the surface. All right? Um, for the cancers. And the cancer risings and those people that have a predominance of planets in the sign of cancer in their birth chart, then this has a lot to deal with their uh, their relationship dynamic because it's their seventh house, okay? So for Gemini, it just passed the last three years and has applied to their very personal relationship. Now, it begins to affect the cancers. And because Pluto is there with Saturn, for, for a lot of people, not just the signs that I'm mentioning, you're going to see transformative and irrevocable life processes occur that have to deal with the father's side of the family or the disciplining parent if the father wasn't the disciplining parent. you understand? Really important to the disciplining parent is just that traditionally uh, fathers, the male counterpart is traditionally the disciplining parent, but you have single parent households and um, you have uh, household where the woman is the disciplining parent. So it would happen to whoever was the disciplining parent, to be more specific. And it concerns grandparents and their side of the family, great aunts and uncles. So when I say irrevocable life processes, you should be able to put that together. You know, you have some sick relatives that on your, on your disciplining parent side of the family, it would be really good to get up under them and get the information you need from them, family history, or to interact with them because, you know, that's a sign that they're not going to be here for so much longer. But I don't want to dwell on that for too long, right? I just want to put it out there. Um, for the Leos and the Leo Risers and people who have predominance of planets in Leo, this is occurring in their place of work and in their place of services rendered or received, as well as the place that deals with um, your regimen, your diet. So we're going to find a lot of Leos and Leo Risers changing their diet, changing their work regimen, their workout regimen, the way they dress, the way they eat, the way they actually function, their health, their condition. And, and a lot of Leos and Leo Rising women that I know already are talking about um, changing their diets and getting on new health plans because the sixth place deals with health, all right? That's personal. The, uh, the personal application, uh, on a more interpersonal dynamic, it deals with the workplace, actually the jobs. So for you people that are having work there, you're not satisfied with the work that you're doing. You're not satisfied with the job that you're given to do, and it's time for y'all to start looking for other places of employment. Make sure that you act like a gorilla. That's <laughs> what, what I mean by that is you don't let go of one branch until you get a firm hold on the next one. You understand? Because... Saturn also deals with delays, it deals with poverty, and it deals with things not going your way as soon as you want them to go your way. But then you have to apply yourself with a disciplinary uh, effort, endeavor, in order to succeed, to get past these obstacles. So for those people that are Leo, there goes your um, general warning with that regard. All right? Um, for the Virgo and the Virgo rising and people who have strong planets placed, strong placements in the sign of Virgo in their birth chart. This points to their love nature, to their children nature, to their creative endeavors, okay? So, that, you know, Pluto and Saturn in this place says that, you know, fatherhood or parenthood becomes an issue, all right? Whether it's wanted or unwanted. Uh, it also points to the stability, Saturn, being need, uh, uh, needed to be established in order for children to come about for the birth of children to manifest with Pluto in the fifth house, okay? And it also points to speculative venture. You know, love is a speculative venture, whether people realize it or not. Raising children 
is a specialist convention, as well as taking your money, buying a piece of land or a piece of equipment, and putting that equipment out there to profit off of, or putting that land out there to resell and gain money. Also, that's speculation. The other forms of speculation, I'm going to leave that to y'all to look up, you know, but whatever you find yourself speculating in is, 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 is going to be a need for the motif of Saturn and Pluto. And this is going to bring us up to a concentration between April and uh, between April of this year and September this year. Because this is when Saturn goes retrograde. And I'm going to take a second to elaborate more on the, the retrograde process because the media and, and, you know, astrologers, commercial astrologers, have really sensationalized this shit to, to, to have you thinking that it's always negative. But like I said earlier, these, these retrogrades don't occur unless the sun is trying them. So that means that unless they get blessed by the sun, they don't happen. And blessings by the sun, the sun is right in consciousness. So, you know, that's a favorable condition, astrologically speaking. It means that you are given more time to work on your project, to plan your project, to put your personal energy into a thing than you normally would because if the Saturn didn't go retrograde for four months, that four months, it would not be in that sign. So instead of being in that sign for two and a half years, which is how long it would take is if it didn't go retrograde, you get an extension of two years and nine months or two years and ten months. So that's like me telling you, Rich, with saying, man, I want you to, to build this house and you got two and a half years to do it. You know, well, you would much rather right. have right. two years and ten bucks. You do what I'm saying? You, 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 right. you know, right. so I can take my time. I'm not pressed to meet that deadline. This is what retrogrades do. And they give you more of what that planetary energy, I mean, what that planet is pointing to energy-wise. And Saturn deals with calculative moves. It deals with planning. It deals with discipline. And it deals with time factors. So you have more time. You have more opportunity to develop your discipline. You have uh, uh, um, more opportunity to establish a stable base from which to operate. You see? And for those people that are thinking about having children, for you Virgos, for you sinus allergy catching, headache, uh, or sinus allergy, high blood pressure uh, experience, and these people that have this disease, this is Virgo rising. Okay, you don't have to be a Virgo to get that. You know, you can be born with, with, with Virgo in the ascendant. And these people are the focus is on children. And also, they are uh, turning down the rebuilding of your disciplinary program or your disciplinary perspective. You're going to have to look at new ways to, to deal with your children and their behavior, basically. All right, this is what that points to. And those people that, you know, that don't pay any mind are going to be wondering, like, why isn't this working? You know, we've been doing this. This is how I've been implementing the discipline. Of that. I've been had him on this program. I've I been had her doing this. It just doesn't seem to be working for her right now. Well, those two planets, Pluto is transformation. And Saturn is tearing down and rebuilding. So you must transform the way you approach that scenario through a systematic tearing down and rebuilding of your perspective on that, as opposed to feeling that the child is being unruly, you know, or that being a parent. Is, is not the thing to do right now. You know, you have to rework things. You have to reset and uh, recalibrate in order to accommodate the new challenge that you come through. All right? And for those people who are Libras, this is occurring in their place of domesticity and it's dealing with their nurturing parents. Okay? So whether whichever parent, the mother or the father was the nurturing parent and their side of the family. All right? So you can see events of an irrevocable nature occurring and disabilities occurring, feuds over inheritances and things of this nature manifesting. You know, uh, Libra is one of the most non-confrontational signs of the earlier. These are the people who, regardless of how capable they are of hurting you or of fucking you up, basically, <laughs> you just, these are the people, they don't want to do it. You just, they don't want to have to deal with any such. So, but I can tell y'all, this motion is at a 90 degree angle to your ascending if you're Libra rising, to your sun degree if you're a Libra, to any, to those people born throughout the 70s, 
it's going to like rock the foundations of your relationship in terms of just domesticity. So you living with a partner and uh, whether y'all are married or not, you both have a, a, a vested interest in the domestic situation. Well, Saturn is going to bring some instability and the need to transfer authority or responsibility is the theme, it's the motif of that Saturn Pluto uh, conjunction going on in there. And when Saturn goes retro, it's also like when you on your mark, you set, go. When you're ready to go on a race, you know, that planet will be on your mark. So there goes that delay, right? It goes in the retrograde. Get set in his retrograde. And then when, it, when, it, when, the, when the starting shot is heard, it goes direct again. Right? So you have that time to set yourself. Don't be surprised when the situation gets to the point where things have to change and you haven't acted in, you know, in advance. Don't feel overwhelmed and be like, oh, my God, like, this ain't working. I got to deal with this bill and that. But when you're giving, you're being given forewarning right now. You see? Um, that's Libra, right? For Scorpio, this, it, it moves out of their money house. So the Scorpios and the Scorpio Risers, they just went through a moral and a value rehashing. A financial, materialistic view on life has been totally transformed. You dig? It has moved itself now into Capricorn, and it, it did with your mindset and your perspective, the way you're looking at things, and like the way you communicate yourself and ideas. Those who are um, taking on new fields of study are going to see that it's not as easy as they thought it was going to be. You know, it's like when people come to me trying to learn astrology, and their first lesson is like, "Whoa." Uh, yo, dude, I didn't know that the strategy was like this. I'm like, yo, dude, this is the science of life. What you thought it was going to be a cakewalk? You know, <laughs> we ain't baking cupcakes here. You know, this is a mathematical process. So the reality of the situation is really what, well, you know, a lot of Scorpio, Scorpio risers are going to undergo some serious reality check and a reworking of their ideals, their morals, their paradigms is going to have to occur, all right? For those people who are Sagittarius, you know, you just recovering. You just getting out of a cycle where Saturn passed through there and tore down your optimism, your self-image. You know, uh, if you needed to go back to school and didn't, you're going to wish you had. You know what I'm saying? And for these people, the, uh, the ability to move around and travel was impeded to some degree. Well, now Saturn moves into your money house. And now Pluto being there, and when it goes retrograde from April, from this spring to September to the fall, so that's the, uh, the mid-spring to, like, the beginning of the fall, you have to, um, to rehash your financial situations to save some money. <laughs> you dig? You ain't been saving money. You ain't been responsible with your bills. You know, all of that is going to come to the fall before September this year, and you're going to have to deal with these things, especially if you've been irresponsible in your obligations, your financial obligations. And the need to reset the way you're spending money and all of that is going to manifest anyway. And that's on a material level. On an immaterial level, it has everything to do with morals and values. Those things that were important to you, that have been important to you for the last three and a half to seven years, they're going to lose importance. Those things you have not prioritized, the needed prioritizers are going to confront you. Yeah, they, like, yeah, you know you were supposed to uh, uh, reset the foundation of this porch, but you kept putting it off, and now the porch is lopsided for real. Can't nobody go in the back. We can't have no cookout song. You know, situation like that is what's going on, all right? Um, for the Capricorns and the Capricorn rising, man, this is going to be one serious time for y'all. You know, Saturn is, is your planet, really, and, you know, it's harshness. It makes things more serious. And where Capricorn was standing right up and said, yo, I'm a serious motherfucker anyway. You know, I can deal with this shit. Today. <laughs> you know, I can handle this burden. You better, and you better put your disciplinary hat on because now you are required to exercise that Capricorn aspect and nature that you're in possession of. Really, that's for everyone, but more so Capricorn sons and ascendants because the sun represents one's self-image, and the ascendant represents how you express yourself in the world and how the world reacts to your preferred 
form of expression. So your timing, you know, is everything to Capricorns and planning. These are the people that tell you, wait, man, I need time to process this shit. I need to, you know, it isn't that they don't understand. They just want to shift through it, man. They can get a very good feel for what they're dealing with. Well, the opportunity to do that, if you haven't had opportunities, it's going to manifest itself. And if your planetary uh, alignment sets it up so that you haven't, I mean, so that you have had that time, then you're going to find yourself that being challenged, okay? And for the most part, your sense of security and stability with regard to your own personal image or and or your own personal form of self-expression is going to go through drastic challenges and therefore are people in change. Whether you can handle it or not, that's what you're going to have to deal with, you know? This is like, you know, you, you, you got winter tires for your car, you, 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 you know, you you got the insulation on the windows in your home, so you are prepared to deal with a harsh winter. Believe me, dog, that don't keep the winter from being any harsher. It still snows. The snow still gets too deep. You still got to shovel snow in your driveway. It's still, it's still winter time. So where you are able to receive the comfort of your home because you did what? You put things into place. You acted responsibly. These are the lessons for Capricorn and Capricorn lives. Really, that and there's a responsibility, period. So everybody is going to be confronted with responsibility with every God. But where it hits them depends on where the sun sat or where their ascendant sat in their birth chart. And, you know, that's what I'm emphasizing here. So for those people, I know some people are going to be confused because, you know, you're just coming into the knowledge of this science or you haven't delved into it deep enough to really comprehend fully what I'm getting at. I am trying to put it as simple as possible, right? For Aquarius, um, this this is going down in the 12th place of your sun ascendant or Aquarius planet. And the 12th place deals with your spiritual self. It deals with those intangible aspects of life. You know, like... Your self-conscious, your dreams, and your ability to sleep when it starts to manifest. So there, these people are going to be disturbed. Your sense of the peace of mind and sense of inner security that is not bore witness to by the by by through normal process or by everyday people in their life or their nearest contact. This is where they're going to find an upheaval and a, and uh, a tearing down and a rebuilding to be necessary. And their sense of privacy. Is going to feel violated. So, you know, where where they've been able to function without any supervision, without any uh, repercussions, without any reproach, they, that's not going to be so easy. So, you know, especially people who are dealing in extra relationship affairs. You know, you're cheating. You're engaging in secret activity that you don't want your partner to look to be, that you don't want your partner to see or realize, look to be exposed, man, and or, or for some type of exposure to manifest. It will often resent, result in resentment, which is Pluto, and a need to transform that activity and heal and, you know, to, to recover from that activity once exposed and saddened, separation. So if you are engaged in activity that doesn't behoove your relationship, strongly advise you to get your shit in order. <laughs> and those <laughs> private aspects, behind the scenes aspects of work, okay? Let's take it out of the, you know, the moral arena and put it in the social, professional arena. Then you, there's going to be a need to exercise discipline and restraint where restraint and discipline were uh, ignored or avoided before. And the, you know, neglect was that regard will manifest within two and a half years to the point where you're going to really feel like, yeah, how did he know? And he wasn't even reading me. You dig? I am reading you. You know, I am reading that aspect of you. So um, the next after that is Pisces. <clears throat> and because this motion is occurring in the, uh, the sign of Capricorn, in relationship to Pisces, this is with their elders, their social circles, their aunts and uncles, the preferably the disciplinary parents, brothers and sisters, or peers, right? So at the time that you may see your aunts or your uncles or your, uh, or your parents' friends going through some difficulty, that is a sign for you to recognize that this, that thing or similar 
the same or similar situation is impending upon your person because it deals with your social interactions. It may not even pertain to you. It will pertain to your friends and therefore affect you through your interaction, your inability to interact with them, your inability to help this situation. If it messes with you uh, personally, 11th place deals with goals. It deals with hopes and wishes, okay? Things that you have not yet put your hands on that you hope to acquire or that you hope to attain, you know, obtain or obtain, all right? Maturity or status-wise. And it's going to affect you in that area. It's going to require that you take some losses. About 15 minutes. Thank you, man. We got about 15? No, my fault, brother. My fault. I'm talking to somebody else. Go ahead. Yeah, okay. So for those people who are Pisces, Pisces rising, and, you know, you're going to find that your social circle is affected primarily by this motion. And the need to adjust to that is you function and you have a high dependency on alliances and social, your social network. And I'm not just referring to the computer, man, you know, Facebook and shit. I'm not referencing that. I'm referencing your social network, people that you need to get things done, who you interact with, that you have amicable relations with, all right? And your elders, you know, so forth. I don't repeat myself. Let's go on, on to the next one. Aries, I discussed that, right? Uh, we did it full circle. Right, right. You, know? you went full circle, right. Yeah, well, okay. Man. Now, that was yeah. just the, the Saturn uh, uh, Pluto retrograde, you know, we, I'm going to try to be quick about this, I'm not going to give a full circle with you because I don't have time, alright, but people, we can look to June, uh, from June to November, Neptune is going retrograde in Pisces, we're going to see a lot in the news about the recreational use of marijuana, again, you know, this guy, uh, Sessions, whatever his name is, he just initiated some kind of program that the MPs, the legalization of it. So that's going to come to the fore this year. Action with that regard, tension between state and federal in that respect is manifesting. I don't know how they're going to do it. You know, I, I didn't really have time to, to look at every single thing yet. It usually takes me about a month, a month and a half, you know, and I usually don't get these things in order till February, right? So, so pardon me, right? Um, in June, Aries goes retrograde in Scorpio, and and let me tell y'all something, man. Um, uh, um, Aries and Scorpio has always, you know, from from as long as I can remember, and I've been tracking. I uh, pardon me, Mars to Scorpio. I've been tracking Mars for like the last twenty five years. Whenever you enter Scorpio, you know, police violence and uh, bloody murders and things of this nature, slaughter, you come to the fore. Like, whoa. So, you know, we're going to hear about uh, uh, abuses and life being taken abroad and at home. And, you know, uh, uh, hopefully it's not just going to be one-sided. You know, I'm a bit militant. It won't be just some citizen getting blasted. You will hear about uh, uh, some officials catching heat as well. You know, that's highly likely with Mars and Scorpio. All right, that goes retrograde in June. Um, it stays retrograde until August. And normally, you know, uh, Mars can stay retrograde for up to five months. This is a short retrograde cycle. And the faster a planet is moving, uh, the more intense its uh, indications are. So it makes it even more likely that, be, that this summer, between June and August, we're going to see some serious violence between police and citizens manifesting and kicking off, right? And, and from July 3rd to July 21st, Mercury goes retrograde, all right? That's an opportunity to rehash your ideas, to, to, to get your paperwork in order, to, you know, if you haven't made those applications to certain job places and you want to do that, it's an excellent time to start job hunting. You know, because you're given, and Mercury deals with Virgo, with work and jobs. It also deals with paperwork, applications, and communications. So any communications that need to be put in place to facilitate a better means of employment is ideal if you're not content with your career to handle this type of business between July 3rd and 24th. And then from August the 8th to January of next year, we got Oranos and Aries going retrograde. 
Orlando is dead with independence. It deals with human rights. Aries is dead with the law and the military. All right? So we're going to see. That's going to be amplified by the Mars and Scorpio motion. All right? They, you know, we're going to see that kick off. Uh, uh, Orlando is going retrograde August the 8th. Um, Mars will stay retrograde until August the 28th. So, therefore, Mars will still be retro on August the 8th when Uranus goes um, um, retrograde. And Mars is going to go direct on the 28th while Uranus is in Aries. And the reason why I'm putting this focus on Aries and Mars and, and um, Uranus and, and Scorpio is because the, uh, Uranus is exalted. They have a connection. Uranus is exalted in Scorpio and Mars being there is the dispositor for Uranus and Aries. You know, when I say dispositor, it's like, you know, you got the amplifier uh, up against the wall on the shelf, and then you got a speaker plugged into it that has a cord that speakers on the other side of the room. Well, if, if Uranus and Aries is the amplifier, then the speaker for it is where Mars is located in Scorpio, and that's the reason why I wanted to make that connection. You know, usually, bruh, you have some questions for me because, you know, I done put myself on speed dial. I done ran through the whole gambit, and I'm open to any discussion you might want to have. Yeah, just a couple of questions. You're, um, yeah, you were pretty thorough in your breakdown for this year, so I know the people are definitely going to enjoy it. I'm sure they took notes, and uh, you can always rewind if you missed out on anything. Um a couple of things. Uh, in terms of oh, that, 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 that eclipse, you said it's uh, eclipsed in January. What sign is it in? You said again. The, the, the moon will be in Leo and the sun will be in Aquarius. Okay. Speaking of Aquarius, you know, we, we, we keep hearing that the sun is in Aquarius. We keep hearing about the age of Aquarius and uh, what the age of Aquarius brings. Uh, two things I want to ask you about the age of Aquarius. Uh, number one, um, a lot of people are saying with the age of Aquarius, Aquarius, we they, we don't need the traditional leaders that we're used to. So this is why the 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 systems are are breaking down, and what we call traditional leaders, people are not looking at them as leaders anymore. My question to you is, I don't know any civilization that functioned in antiquity without leaders. So I don't know when was the last time the age of Aquarius uh, came around this planet. And I wonder if there was leadership during that time because they're telling us now there won't be no leaders. So what can you tell me? Is is that accurate to say that there's no leaders in the age of Aquarius? Because I don't know any ancient civilization that existed without leadership. Go ahead, my brother. Yeah, okay. Let me ask, answer as many as them that come to my mind. Okay. First of all, the last age of Aquarius occurred approximately 25,920 years ago, a little bit less than that, because this age of Aquarius used the measure that I'm using, which is the heliacal measure, from the, which is 13 degrees in front of the vernal point, not the vernal point itself. The, and this age started in um, 1453, around 1453, 1452, all right? Um, to say we don't need these, that will never happen. The nature of man requires that we designate a leader. This shit even happens amongst the animals, you know. In any community-based uh, society, there's going to be an alpha or a decision maker. So what it is is the way um, that leader is selected. In the age of Leo, which was 12,960 years ago, we developed kingship. Okay, and monarchy stayed the the format even after there's still monarchs in, in, in effect today. However, monarchy is not the trend for the the superconscious. You know, the superconscious is developed. When I say the superconscious, I mean the collective consciousness of mankind, because that's what the ages pertain to. Thus, during the age of Aquarius. You, America was formed. America is an Aquarius form government. What we mean is the people are the rulers. So what we're going to see is monarchy before the age of Aquarius ends, and we got about 2,000 years left for that, okay? Almost 2,000 years. But before that ends, 
you were going to see monarchy disappear and democracy or Republican forms of government or parliamentary forms of government become prominent. And that's already taken root because in these African countries that revolted and ousted their colonists, they are inducted Republican form of government, which is Aquarian. They, they still respected the kings. These countries still have their little chieftains and their kings, but these kings don't sit on the Congress now. You see? So that's what that's, what that's referencing. There, there's always going to be a figurehead of some sort, but uh, the power will shift from the individual who has absolute power to the people. And you will see that paradigm start to proliferate. Like when they say that it's rare here in the United States, you know, the form of government we have where the people actually are the power. You know, well, that form of government in, in other forms, but basically that template is going to start to manifest globally as it has. And in the age of Aquarius, the majority of, of human beings, of countries, on this planet, will adopt that form of government in one form or another. You know, I hope that answers your question. Uh, yeah, definitely. It definitely did, man. I'm glad you brought uh, clarity, to that, clarity to that because, you know, that's something I just continuously hear, and I'm just trying to analyze present time with my study of uh, history. So I uh, definitely appreciate your answer, my brother. Another question in terms of the age of Aquarius. And uh, this year, we keep hearing about the, um, you know, we got the, the, the Me Too movement going on. And a lot of people are talking about, you know, the the rise of the divine feminine. And what I want to ask you, I was, I was uh, looking, I wasn't reading, so I was looking at a video online, and they were talking about how the divine feminine has nothing to do with gender. It's uh, energy that is a receptive energy. It just so happens in this society that, women are more receptive due to our conditioning. So I was thinking about the, um, you know, before we all this talk about the divine feminine and, and the age of, uh, uh, what well, we just left the age of Pisces, and Steve Harvey had that book, the um, Think Like a Man, Act Like a Woman. And I was thinking, is that why women who... Thought like I guess you could say were, 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 were had mindsets like men. They tend to be more successful in the age of in the age of uh, Pisces. Like let's say like an Oprah, like her business mind. Like she had a hell of a business mind. Shrewd businesswoman did what she had to do. To, you know. Um, yeah, I that, think we go on that. Yeah, yeah. Is that just nothing to do with gender? It's just a a personality kind of thing when we talk about divine masculine or divine feminine. Yeah, well, let me put it to you like this here. I just, the other day, was on the phone with one of my students, and we were talking about the divine masculine and the divine feminine. And in so much as you half man, half woman, everyone is. <laughs> you dig? Like if you say, man, I don't know what you're talking about, dog. I got a fellas between my legs. I'm 100% man. You are half woman, man. You are made out of your mother. You know, and your father, you get an equal amount of chromosomes from both of them. Those two chromosomes combine to make your individual self. And therefore, the divine feminine, which represents those qualities that are receptive. You are emotional. You know, you can be made to cry. You feel sorrow, remorse. You feel the need to nurture. You love tenderly. You see, you feel the need to make secure your situation. All of this pertains to the divine feminine. The, you, even the idea of being pr the protector. Like people are naturally attribute that to the man. When you look at nature, the feminine side of nature is way more protective. You fuck with a she-wolf and her cub. You fuck with a she-bear, a she-lion, uh, uh, the black widow spotted, the praying mantis. We can go on and on. You know, the, um, the, the reason why we see a predominance of men, of masculine thinking women making it in the age of Aquarius is the age of Aquarius, the pinnacle of the patriarchy, as the age of Leo was the pinnacle of the matriarchy. But that was 12,000 years ago, all right? Now, understand that each age 
has 12 sub-cycles. So the, the, those 12 sub-cycles, the, 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 the masculine feminine oscillates in, inside of that predominantly masculine or feminine age. Right? In the age of Taurus, which is a feminine sign, but it was between the shift, it was the, in the middle, between the, the matriarchy and the patriarchy. In the age of Taurus, we have what we call the egalitarian government. And, and when we look at the age of Taurus, which is like a roughly uh, five to 6,000 years ago, right? A little bit more, a little bit less. The, um, <laughs> you had the queen mother who appointed Pharaoh's nephew and had the power to unseat the Pharaoh. You see? Because the Pharaoh was the embodiment of the masculine patriarchy and the queen mother Mut was the, uh, uh, his mother, the, the queen mother had the power to delegate who would be Pharaoh and who would not. So the balance of power and the egalitarian manifesto. So now we have 6,000 years later, shifted to the supreme masculine, and everything is dominated by men globally. No matter what the religion is, no matter what the culture is, you know, you find a very few small pocket underdeveloped or undeveloped societies like the Andaman Islands and all that that are still holding on to that Leonian, to that age of Leo-based government where the woman is prominent in, in leadership. Okay, so we still have another 6,000 years before that egalitarian balance is achieved. However, on the way there, it's going to oscillate. And yes, it would be appropriate that because we are in a male-dominated society at the peak of the patriarchy in terms of its oscillations through the ages, that a woman who thinks in terms of what society views as masculine, who really acts, not just thinks, but acts in that capacity, is going to succeed because it is the, the standard and the criteria is set by the masculine aspect of society now. Okay? There are, these sub-cycles that I referenced are all 180 years long. So you find you're in and out Every 180 years, that it fluctuates the influence of male-dominated decision-making and power-holding to will give sway to the feminine hold uh, 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 um, power structure, you see, and it will continue to operate. In that 180-year cycle, there are 12 15-year cycles. So every 15 years, you're going to see it operate as well. And what it's like... Uh, um, sound wave. When you take music and put it into a sound machine to, to, to grasp the music, you've got the, the faint waves, okay, the, the, the wind instruments, you've got the, the heavy waves, you've got the... So that's how it works in terms of masculine or positive and feminine or negative or assertive or recept re, uh, uh, receptive energy. And this is why you see in male-dominated society, if it were the other way around, and it was female-dominated society, then the man who had a softer approach to things would be more successful than the man who was outright aggressive and assertive in his nature because society was, is more receptive to the feminine manifestation of things, regardless of gender. Right, right. Mm, man, I'm telling you, man, you a sharp brother, man. I appreciate it every time I have you on the show, man. I want you to leave your contact information. I know that people are going to be calling you like crazy, and they should. So let the people know how they could get in contact with you, my brother. Okay. I um Since we last spoke, I got a website. So you can you can go to Cosmophysics at C-O-Z-O-C-O-Z-M-O-P-H-Y-Z-I-X-361, all one word. Cosmophysics361.com, and you can hit me, you can reach me there. You can call me direct. You listen to this radio show? You know, I've been giving people discounts for coming to me through the show. You know, you come directly through my site, you're getting full price, okay? You come to me through this show, you make mention of the fact that you heard this show, 
if you got my phone number from the show and you called me directly between 1 p.m. and 7 p.m. Eastern, that means you don't get it if you call me before 1 <laughs> or if you call me after 7. Right? You call me between 1 and 7 and you say, yeah, I heard you on Mr. Show, then you can get my reading for 33% off, whatever the going rate is, all right? And my phone number is 516-881-6992. I do personal readings. I need your your uh, birth date and your, your, your time of birth. If you don't know your time of birth, I do have a means of measure with which to find your time of birth. That's my forte. You know, I find people's times of birth all the time. It takes a little bit more work, but, but I don't mind that, all right? I do have a fee for my charge and the prices, I mean, for my services. And the prices vary depending on what you want being done, right? Generally, my readings are $200, but they can range from 300 to 400 to down to 100 depending on the work I have to do, all right? Um... You can follow me on Instagram. I'm R A period A K H U. That's Ra Cool. I'm on Twitter R A A K H U. I'm on Facebook Ra Cool Ra Cool the Cosmocrat. Okay, just put Ra Aku in there. You'll find me. Put Cosmophysics in there. Spell it C O Z M O P H Y Z I X. Google me. You'll find me. I've been doing things with the internet with regards to this business since 2000, since 2001, between 2000 and 2001. So you, you'll be able to do your research on me if you want to know how real I am. I got blog talk radio shows with, with, um, with the pills. So you can, you can go to blog talk and search Cosmophysics the way I just spelt it. You can look at all, uh, all of the know the lead shows from 2012 on up to where they went offline. And um, you'll find me that I frequented their show there as a guest. So, you know, you can get up on the science. I'm teaching the science, too, for those, for serious students. You know, i got to say that. The people have preconceived notions as to what they're going to come and learn, you know. I'm teaching cosmophysics and the cosmophysics approach to astrology exclusively. Right? So you want to learn that, just get in contact with me. Let me know. I also have a YouTube channel, all right? Ra Aku, the Cosmo Physician, all right? It's R-A-A-K-H-U. You'll find me, you know. Um, Rich, I really appreciate, you know, the fact that you had me as a guest, bro, you know. Um, I'm waiting for you to call me so you can get, so I can give you the reading because I want to return the favors you'll be doing me, man. So whenever you get good and ready. <laughs> man, I, I'm, I'm, I'm I might, listen, listen, I might call you right after we hang up this phone, man. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's how, we, that's we, how all we, for you be, man. Shit. Man, we can do it. Like, you know, we can do it. You, you know, because, you know, you, I know you're Capricorn rising. No, I'm, no, I'm, I'm a Virgo. I'm a Virgo. Oh, no, the sun is Virgo, but you're right, a cat right, rising. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Um, right. Yeah, yeah. It's a, this this Saturn moving into your face is going to present a whole bunch of work that you need to do. You know, uh -huh. Uh -huh. yeah. So you know, it would be good to to get a Saturn schedule so you can you understand what, what the nature of the obstacles are when they come for you, man. And it ain't even going to be you. Saturn represents other people. Capricorn points to other people, and you'll be like, man, er everywhere you have dependency, you know, you'll see it. You know, mm -hmm. and we can get it to the time, to the months and weeks and, and days that it's going to be in effect, you know. That's what you would be calling for, really. Indeed, indeed. Well, once again, man, I want to thank you for being on the show. Uh, I will leave the brother's information in the description bar if you didn't get a chance to write it down, so you can you could just click on it. But I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Make sure you support via PayPal or through the Patreon site if you can to keep independent media going on. This is Brother Rich Underground Railroad, the Brother Ra Aku. We signing out, family. We're going to see you next time. Peace. Peace. You ain't never seen a man turn leg go with his hands. 
You ain't never seen a man get a queen wet with a glance What a turn, why, whole wide world, mine in my mind In and out of time, my light shine bright for the blind Something about the way I do it 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 Said I'm gonna be a millionaire soon, but I already knew it I'ma die the bullets fluid All this winning therapeutic Something about the way I do it Something about the way I do it They be trying to drain my energy up with the battery, is not included Women trying to be recruited Let them do the thing I pulled it What is cute then she fool it Something about the way I do it I remember playing ring around the rosy, now I I got a pocket full of OZs, water dollars, wallet full of old cheese. Got a Glock, a cock and pop a police. Block a block a block a boom, shock a lock a bottle, shot them while he rock a rosary. Got your mama watching out the nose, please. Sloppy toppy while I'm trying to go sleep. Something about the way I do it, I ball out like a nude is hooping. Or a Hoosier student, got the problem, I'm a Ruby's Cupid. I'm a superhuman, you a decorative.